Well, good morning. <coughs> uh, I guess you just saw me uh, uh, cutting out the stock for our project today, which is four uh, computer stands. I know we uh, last week we started on the boat, but and I've been working on it all week. But I'm just going to select out uh, woodworking projects for my boat rebuild. I'm not going to uh, do boat rebuilding uh, uh, videos. I'm just going to select out uh, interesting woodworking projects associated with that build. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to build some computer stands. I got a friend that uh, it, it, where he works, they have computer monitors. They don't sit in chairs. You know, they walk over to the uh, computer monitors, and the computer monitors aren't up high enough, so they have to look down. Uh, so he uh, he asked me if, if I could build some uh, stands to put the computer monitors up on, and also a little stand for his printer. Uh, but we're not going to get any of that done unless we do what? That's right. We need to knock off the chit chat and get to work. Well, from the stock uh, I just cut out, I just mocked up uh, three of the four stands. I think the computer, this one and this one are okay. But this one here, uh, that thing's going to be tippy. I need to make those uh, legs. You know, these are based on dimensions that he gave me but this thing's going to be tippy if you put a monitor on it it's going to tip over I need to uh, I may need to make, make the base wider and also maybe slant these legs out a little bit so I got a little trial piece here I put uh, an angle there <coughs> so the piece will the leg will flare out and then the top will be up there on up there like that so it'll have that flared angle to it let's go ahead and cut these and see what they look like I'm gonna flare them at the bottom too uh, so I'm cutting my legs out uh, of stock that's uh, 12 inches wide and then I'll shape them like a pyramid uh, and angle them up to eight inches. Now sometimes the exact measurements aren't as important as uh, making them all the same. And you can probably see these various lines on my bench here, on my table sled from past projects. So. I'm going to bring this thing out to about where I want it. And what I'll do is I'll now measure this. I mean, not measure it. It's about a foot. And so I got that line. So I got to make four of these. So I know that if I slide it out to that line, on all four of them, I'll, uh, I'll have some consistency. I could probably cut these easier on the bandsaw, but I get better cuts on the uh, table saw. What I did is I got a wedge here that gives me my angle and also steadies, steadies the board in there. Then I just line my <clears throat> my blade up with that uh, line I, I drew on the board here. Let's give it a try. This is the shape we're going for, this pyramid looking shape. It'll angle. Um, and now I'm setting up those lines there this is the top and I uh, lined it up on this center line that I drew on the <clears throat> leg and I got a corresponding center line on the top and I just line up those marks and then put a mark at the top and then put a 
straight edge between the corner. And that line. Okay, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it flares to 12 inches down here at the uh, to the front to back, and it flares to 10 inches on the uh, on the front. There's a little panel that's going to go in there. Now that panel will be recessed, and it'll be trim around it. Well, since we're doing two of them, I uh, I took a break and uh, went ahead and uh, cut one of them out. What we're going to be doing now is, is putting in that rabbit to receive this little side plate. Now to make sure I put these rabbits in the right place, I'm, I've actually got, got it, I actually got my mock up here with the legs going the right way. And I got the rabbits just uh, marked in here with uh, magic marker so I won't get confused. And for these rabbits you can, you can put the wood through this way or you can put it through this way. This way is the easiest and the safest. But for that setup you got to remember that the height of your blade is going to give you the width of the rabbit and then your fence, your sacrificial fence will determine the uh, width of the uh, or the depth of the dado. So here's my top and this is a little plate I'm going to put in there and it'll go right in that rabbit right like that and it's perfectly flush right here. Okay I've measured down the distance I want to go with that uh, rabbit on that inside edge there and I put a little mark and so I'll push this thing through till that mark lines up with the mark I have on my sacrificial fence. We're going to hold the hold the legs uh, to the top using these uh, pocket screws. Let's go uh, make those pocket holes right now. Okay, I just got to remember to put the pocket holes on the side that doesn't have the centering line. Okay, and next thing we're going to put these little radiuses in here on both sides. And remember, if these if these aren't right, your eye will pick it up. And I'll mark my radius. Now you can see here that my stock has these saw marks, and you'd think, well, who cares? You're gonna, you're gonna route it. Um, but the problem is that the roller bearing uh, bounces along on that when you're trying to route it so you really need to get that uh, as smooth as you can. The router bit will kind of amplify any errors you have in your sawing. So this isn't going to be a work of art or anything but I just do need to get it kind of smooth. Now I'm attaching these legs to the top with the pocket screws right here and notionally in a perfect world that center line there will line up with the center line we put on the uh, top earlier. You just want to drive them down until they're snug but 
but no no farther because you'll blow the whole hole out. Okay, right there, that's perfect. Okay, next step is to uh, put our little gussets in. You know, normally in a bench, you got uh, a lot of times you've seen in benches where the where there's a, an additional board across here. Uh, that stiffens the thing considerably. Okay, this is going to go right in here and it's a real tight fit. And then we're going to put it in uh, put it in with some of these really tiny these real tiny staples we've used on a number of projects. I got my pressure set at uh, about 80, 80 pounds. Sticking the other, the other boxes together and then we'll get on to the trim. To tell you the truth, on these, uh, on these smaller boxes, I probably don't even need these braces, but uh, Putting them in anyway, just because uh, these are going to be sitting side by side, and I want them—I want them to all have a s standard, uniform appearance. The trim we're going to use is uh, this oak uh, strips of oak. It's uh, three quarters of an inch wide, and it'll be about three eighths uh, deep. Putting the trim on, uh, no big deal. I'm putting it on square, and I'll uh, round it over a little with the sander. Now I'm putting the uh, putty on the brad holes and any other flaws I can find. I'm staining uh, everything this uh, natural with this natural stain. I like it because I really get a contrast in the uh, in the color of the wood, particularly between the plywood uh, backer here and then the maple plywood and the um, you know in the oak trim. That's the uh, scheme I use on my shop equipment. I'm about, <clears throat> about ready to wrap it up here. I really like this stain. It's light, but it really brings out the color of the oak. I hope my buddy likes his computer stands. Well, here's our little computer stands. Uh, they all got legs that are five and a half degrees uh, slanting. I made them all consistent. I put this little piece of wood in here on all of them. They're all set off with uh, with oak trim and I hope my uh, Hope my buddy uh, can use them. That does it for another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 147. Making some uh, computer monitor stands and a, a printer stand. Uh, we took the an effort to build them all with a similar design and finish them all the same way because they're going to be sitting on the same ledge. And uh, so we kind of want them to be cousins at least. Well, I hope you got some takeaways, and uh, uh, but most most important, I hope uh, that you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.